All right, Algebra 2, this is complex numbers. So what we have here, guys, is when we start talking about complex numbers, it's talking about imaginary numbers. Um, what happens when we take square roots of negative numbers? So to deal with this, what they did was they said, hey, I can take any number that is negative inside of a square root, and I'm actually going to be able to break out that negative 1. And that negative 1... And if I make a square root of it, they're going to call it i. And so, cool thing is, what you do to one side, you do to the other. So if I square i, you end up getting i squared. And then if you square square root, remember that the square root and the square cancel each other, leaving you with negative 1. So it's good to know that i is the square root of negative 1, and that when you square it, you get negative 1. So we got two examples here. The two examples um, are simplifying square roots. Remember, when you simplify square roots, um, you really should break it down to all of its prime numbers. Now, before I do that, I need to take care of the fact that it's negative. I don't like it. So using one of our properties of, exp of not, well, exponents, I guess, two um, properties of um, square roots is that I can separate any two numbers that multiply to get the number inside. So 18 and negative 1, or 18 times negative 1, is negative 18. So what I'm able to do then is I'm able to break them and multiply them together. Now what you should recognize is that the square root of negative 1 is i. So now I have the square root of 18. Now some books will actually put the i in front so you don't get it mixed up. i is never inside of a square root. Now, unfortunately, you are not done because 18 is not fully reduced. And so to do that, I like to make a prime factorization tree. 2 times 3 times 3 would be 18. And so I'm looking for groups of 2 because it's a square root. And there's my group of 2. They get to leave and go to what I call a dance. So they're on the outside. 2 gets left home alone inside the house, which is the square root and then i goes here at the end. Those are all multiplied together. Now again, some books will put the i in between here in front of the square root. Um, I generally don't, but it does not matter. So when you look at your answers or look for answers in other books or online help, you'll notice some things get placed in different areas. So the same thing will happen here. So this will equal the square root of 125 times the square root of negative 1 squared negative 1 is i, and now you just have to break 125 down. That's 5 and 25, 5 and 5. I just need two of them because I'm looking for partners, so that partner becomes a 1 of the 5s on the outside. The leftover square of 5 stays inside, so he's inside, and then an i on it. So simplify by finding their partners. Now here's the cool thing. If, I'm going to do this step separately, if we were looking for the cubed root of 125, if you remember these rules, then you're looking for groups of three. You need three of the same thing. So when I did this, and, whoops, and got 25, and then 5, and 5, I would have to take all three fives, and the answer actually is... 5. The cubed root of 125 is 5, because what times itself 3 times is 125. The next thing we're going to talk about is complex numbers, or multiplying complex numbers. So when I multiply complex numbers, we have a couple different options. Um, there's one actually I left off of here, um, and it's foiling, and it all works the same. But if I have, just like if I had variables, think of i as an x. It's a variable. You treat it that way. So you would end up i times i, which is i squared. i times i to the third is i to the fourth, because you add their exponents. So everything's going to work the exact same way. So the biggest thing is, on the first problem, I can take 3 times 4 to get 12. And then I have to do the i's, so therefore it would be i squared. Now, if you remember back from the first page, i squared is equal to negative 1, and 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. So, 
there's a lot of times where you're going to have to remember how to use i, but you're also going to have to remember your um, exponent rules, you're going to have to remember your square root rules, you'll have to remember to FOIL, all of those things. So, remember how to deal with square roots. When you multiply two square roots, you can take the numbers inside and multiply them together. So I end up with a square root of a negative negative, which makes a positive. Um, 20 times 12 might be a little daunting if you're thinking, like, I don't have my calculator with me. Well, here, let's think of this. What's 2? This is 2 times 10, which is 20. So if I take the 2 and multiply it to 12, I get 24. Then I can multiply it by 10 to get 240. Now we need to break it down and we need to simplify. 2 and 120. 2 and 60. 2 and 30. 2 and 15. 3 and 5. I do it this way and I try to keep my numbers um, going up. Like I start with the smallest prime number. This is all prime factorization. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Those will turn out to be 240. Because I'm looking for partners. i got a set of partners there. And that's it. And so now I know that 2 goes on the outside and everybody else goes back together. So 2 times 3 times 5. They're all multiplied. So this is 2 times... Uh, 3 times 5 is 15 times 2 is 30. So 2 times the square root of 30 is the same thing as the square root of 240. Now, the last example on this page, as you can see, has i to a very large power. So maybe we need to start setting something up. So like um, i to the first power equals i. I'm going to move this over, actually i to the first equals i i squared is equal to negative 1 i cubed if I multiply by i is negative 1 is negative i and i to the fourth if you think about this it'd be negative 1 times negative 1 which is 1 now after I start to do this I start to repeat because if I multiply i to the fourth, which is 1, by i, I get i. That's just here. And then if I multiply it by i again, I get negative 1. So it goes down the cycle. So you have options. Uh, you can sit here and say, okay, I'm going to count to 31. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You could do it that way. Or you can think of dividing 31 by 4. Now let's, let's, let's start off with a smaller number once. What's i to the seventh power? So if I do the counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7. It should equal negative i. So if I took i, or 4, 7 divided by 4, I get 1 and 3 fourths. Well, guess what 3 is? 3 out of 4 goes to this one right here. So, we're going to use the fact that I can divide that way. So I'm going to go back and say, what's 31 divided by 4? Um, I think it's 7 whole and 3 out of 4. So guess what? It equals negative i. The next example this is going back to our solving techniques like before um, where you're going to solve a quadratic. Um, in this particular case you can see that it is a quadratic but you're missing that b value. So to solve it you're like oh I'm just going to subtract 100. So I get 4x squared equals negative 100 and then you're like hey I got to get x by itself or x squared so I'm going to divide by 4 so I get x squared equals negative 25. And you're like, hey, to get rid of a square, I'm going to take the square root. So if you take the square root of both sides, don't forget that you really have plus or minus in front. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 25, or negative 25. And that's where this problem comes into play. 
You've done this before. It's just that now you're going to end up saying, hey, wait a minute, it's a negative square root, right? The negative inside. So I have to pop that out to make that um, 25, square root of 25 and put an i on it, which means it's just plus or minus 5i. And then you're done. So it's using the skills from before, just adding the fact that you will have to take square roots of negative numbers, and then you fix it. And so what we have here now is every time you have a complex number, you want to put it into complex standard form. Complex standard form is a plus bi, that's an i. Um, and the a part is your real part. The b is the imaginary part. So we could graph these on an xy plane or aka a b plane, so the complex plane as well. And so the first thing we'd have to do is adding and subtracting, and then we'll do some multiplying, but you always just put your answer in the proper form. You put your real thing first before you put your imaginary thing. So adding, subtracting, here's the cool thing. If you look here, if I have an adding between the two symbols or two groups, that means I don't need these parentheses necessarily. If there's something in front of a parentheses, then I have to use my distributive property. But basically, get rid of those parentheses when not needed. And now you just gather up the terms. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 5i minus 7i is minus 2i. That is your answer. And notice that it is in complex standard form. Now, what I said was make sure that there's nothing that I need to get rid of in the front of the parentheses. In this case, there's a negative. I will actually distribute the negative. So 4 plus 6i, I am not going to touch. But a negative times a negative is a positive 1. A negative times a positive is a negative 2i. And now I can do the exact same thing. What's 4 plus four, uh, 1? It is 5. What is 6i minus 2i? And that is a positive 4i. And you're done there. So get rid of the parentheses, use the distributive property, uh, make sure that everything, and then just gather up like terms. It makes your life a lot easier. And the last thing that we want to talk about here uh, before we end the video is rationalizing denominators. I don't like i's or square roots in the basement. So we do it the same exact way. So here's the cool thing. If it's just an i or a 5i, a 2i, a something i, then all you have to do is multiply the top and the bottom by i. Multiply it by the i to get rid of it. Um, don't forget that because the top is a binomial that you will have to distribute. So therefore, the top becomes 4i plus i squared. So we're going to have to fix this a little bit. And then 5i squared. So we will have to evaluate i squareds. Uh, I think you can agree that that would be 4i minus 1 because i squared is negative 1 over negative 5 because i squared is negative 1 and negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. This is almost done. We do not have this in standard form. It should be negative 1 plus 4i all over negative 5. And truly, this should be split up so that you have negative 1 over negative 5 plus negative 4i over negative 5. So this is to be 1 fifth because a negative negative makes a positive minus 4 fifths i because 4 divided by negative 5 is negative. Now that one was actually a fairly straightforward one. The more complicated ones obviously are the ones in this next example. The next example is a binomial over a binomial and they both have i's. And so to handle this, I still have to multiply the top and bottom by the same exact thing. But I need to multiply by the thing that's going to make the bottom not have i. Notice I was okay. There's still an i up here. But it was on top. It was not on the bottom or the denominator. So that thing you're going to use is 1 plus i. Now this is called the conjugate. So because it's a complex number, it's going to be the complex conjugate. It's the same exact bottom right there but we change the sign between your real and imaginary parts. 
Now our task is to use the four letter F word foil to foil the top and the bottom. So yes, there's a lot of work to this. So that becomes two plus two I plus I plus I squared. Okay. And the bottom is one plus I minus I minus I squared. And now you just have to evaluate that. Now I'm going to start at the bottom first because that's the part that obviously is going to be why we did something here. I minus I, they're gone. The middles should cancel out. That becomes a sum and difference. We talked about that on our factoring. I squared here and here both become negative ones. So if you want to, you can make them negative ones. But negative negative makes a positive. So the bottom of this actually becomes a two because it's one plus one, which is two. The top is, notice that this two is here and then we said to add a negative one, so that's one. And then if I add up the i's, that's two i plus i, which would be three i. Notice there are no more i's in the denominator. It's okay on top. Here's your homework. Um, I think they actually should go fairly quick. This is probably the most homework that you guys have had. Um, but make sure on the first two, you are reducing, finding your fi prime factorization trees. Um, four as well, just make sure you multiply first. Five and six, use your um, idea of dividing by four. Seven and eight, make sure to just solve it by taking the square root, solving for x. 11 and 12, add and subtract. 13 and 14, foil, multiply. And then 15 and 16, make sure you do what we just did in the last one by multiplying by the complex conjugate. Have a great day.